Hello everyone. Uh, the study was from our honours degree research project in wildlife management at the University of Pretoria last year. Hence my supervisors and co-authors Jan Fenter from Nelson Mandela University and then Mark Keith and Michael Summers from the University of Pretoria. So interspecific relationships among sympatric carnivore species follow a natural dominance hierarchy. This means that subordinate species, which are usually the smaller ones, would be forced to change their behaviour as a means to coexist and avoid the risk of aggressive interactions and competition. Like for instance, interspecific killings, predation and cryptoparasitism. Then two ways for subordinate species to avoid coming across dominant carnivores are being active at different times of the day and or utilising different areas. Now, this is exactly what we looked at in, in the study. We tested whether carnivore species, which are assumed to be subordinate, display the hypothesized behavior of being active in different areas and at different times of the day compared to their dominant predatory counterparts. I'll show that avoidance relationships among carnivores are rather complex and quite difficult to predict, are specific to a site, meaning that it cannot be extrapolated to other sites without taking into account the carnivore community composition of the area. Are dictated by differences in body size, as mentioned the carnivore community composition, and most likely heavily influenced by overlapping prey preferences. So I was lucky enough to be given access to data collected by the Snapshot Safari project, which uses long-term standardized camera traffic surveys to monitor biodiversity across a large number of sites within Africa. Therefore, included uh, Pilons Path National Park and Madikwe Game Reserve in the north northwest, and then Mount Zebra National Park in the Eastern Cape. 21 cameras were deployed in a uniform grid within Pilons Path for a total sampling effort of just under 12,000 camera days, spanning from November 2017 to May 2019. Species that had 10 or more independent photo captures were included in the study. By independent, I mean that subsequent photos of the same species were at a minimum of 10 minutes apart. For Pilansberg, I therefore included in descending order of number of photo captures brown hyena, black backed jackal, lion, serval, leopard, and caracal. For the temporal analysis, we performed Watson U squared tests and also calculated the coefficient of overlap as developed by Radu and Linky. So to save time, the following graphs are only of species pairs that had significantly different activity periods. This included lion and leopard, as lions were predominantly crepuscular and leopards show cathemeral activity patterns. Right, so the y-axis represents kernel density estimates and the x-axis time of day spanning from midnight back again to midnight. Lion and brown hyena, with brown hyena as being more nocturnal. Same story with lion and blackback jackal. Leopard and blackback jackal with leopards showing a spike of activity in the evening. Um, and blackback jackal and caracal with caracal also showing a spike of activity in the evening, same as leopards. For the spatial analysis, we used occupancy modeling and then looked at the species interaction factor that is calculated from occupancy probabilities. A species interaction factor of less than one indicates segregation, where um, a species interaction factor of more than one aggregation and then uh, equal to one indicates independent spatial use. I highlighted the species pairs that showed significant differences in temporal activity patterns in the green. Uh, you can notice that apart from lion and blackback jackal, all, all of these species pairs also showed indications of spatial avoidance or independent spatial use. So ultimately for Pilansberg, we observed that most of the avoidance behavior seems to revolve around lion and blackback jackal activity. As mentioned, species that avoid large and more dominant carnivores did so by using both space and time. It can perhaps be explained that blackback jackals because of their scavenging nature, we prefer to occupy areas similar to lions, but still avoid them temporally. It is also important to note that, as far as I know, there is only one spotted hyena in Plansberg. 
leopards sticking true to their reclusive nature showed very little overlap with other species in the plants, both temporally and spatially. Then blackback jackal and serval showed no indication of avoidance, yet blackback jackal and caracal did, which supports the idea that caracal and blackback jackal are important competitors within the meso carnivore ranks. Madikwe had 46 cameras active over a total sampling effort of just under 11,000 camera days, spanning from June 2018 to February 2019. Here I included brown hyena, spotted hyena, blackback jackal, lion, leopard, and African wildcat. Again, just to save time, I'll only show you the species pairs that had significant different activity periods, which were lion and spotted hyena, with lions being a bit more active during the daytime and less around midnight compared to the spotted hyenas. Lion and brown hyena, brown hyenas being um, predominantly nocturnal. Spotted hyena and blackback jackal, with jackals being more active during daytime compared to the spotted hyenas. Then the story goes for brown hyena and blackback jackals, as well as African wildcats and blackback jackal. For the spatial analysis, Madikwe, most species pairs that showed significantly different activity periods, again highlighted in green, also showed spatial aggregation which is in contrast to what was observed in Lansbach. So overall in Madikwe, we noticed that avoidance behavior again largely revolves around lions and blackback jackals, but this time also including the two hyena species as well. As was with Lansbach, species known to be scavengers used similar areas to lions, but avoided them by being active at different times of the day except for jackals, who showed no indication of avoiding lions, both spatially and temporally. They did, however, show indications of avoiding other competing scavengers. Then leopards again showed no spatial overlap with all other species. And then lastly, African wildcats avoided jackals temporally, while they avoided leopards spatially, so they possibly employed different tactics for different species. Moving on to Mountain Zebra National Park with their 19 cameras and a total sampling effort of just over 6,000 camera days and spanned from August 2017 to July 2018. Because of the smaller carnival community in Mountain Zebra National Park compared to the previous two areas, I was only able to include these four species. However, it presented the opportunity to look at two competing out of the ordinary carnival species in art wolves and bat-eared foxes. Then once again, these are only the species pairs that show significant differences in activity periods. This includes lion and art wolf, with the larger capacity activity of lions contrasting the nocturnal nature of art wolves. Same thing with lions and bat-eared foxes, bat-eared foxes showing a major spike in activity around midnight. Bat-eared fox and blackback jackals, the latter being more active during daytime compared to the foxes. Same story with, with art wolves and jackals, and then lastly, art wolf and bat-eared foxes, with art wolf activity being spread more throughout the night compared to the bat-eared foxes. All species pairs, apart from lion and bat-eared foxes, showed indications of spatial aggregation along with art wolf and bat-eared foxes using space independently of each other. So overall in uh, Mount Zebra National Park, as with other two reserves, we saw that most of the avoidance behavior revolves around lion and blackback jackal activity. Blackback jackals showed no indications of avoiding lions at all in Mount Zebra National Park, neither spatially nor temporally which could indicate that jackals are facilitated by the presence of lions due to their scavenging nature, nature and the fact that lions provide them with access to carrion from larger ungulates that are out of their prey range, as well as the low abundance of other large carnivores in the park. Then lastly, art wolves and bat eared foxes rely mainly on temporal segregation as a means to avoid the risk of encountering dominant predator species. So when we look at all three protected areas together, 
we can see that avoidance behavior among carnivore species operate at different levels and to different degrees, both among species pairs as well as between different environments. Lions, as apex predators, do definitely exhibit their dominance, mainly among large and medium-sized carnivores, yet with probably minimum direct effects uh, on the small carnivores. Species known to scavenge rely on temporal avoidance as a means to ensure access to carrion provided by the large and more dominant species. Leopards do not like confrontation, and our findings support their reclusive nature. Then lastly, we recommend that relationships among all carnival species must be taken into account when formulating relevant con conservation strategies and management decisions. So what's next? Um, the study opened the door to even more questions than it answered in my opinion. So that's why I decided to continue with the topic into my master's degree. At this time, we are looking at even more sites, including the Tuala Kalahari Reserve, Comdavua National Park in the Eastern Cape and then the Associated Private Nature Reserves adjacent to the Kruger National Park and lastly Serengeti National Park in Tanzania. We will also delve deeper into more detail by including variables like vegetational differences, topography, spatial and temporal activity of prey species, climatic differences and then lastly differences in carnival interspecific relationships between for example wet and dry seasons. Thank you very much and I hope to give you an update on this at next year's symposium.